And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church as we're online once again with you tonight. Praise the Lord. Good to be in your homes. Happy to ha have you uh, with us online. And uh, we'll continue teaching on the subject of soteriology, the study of salvation. And um, we were talking about the benefits of his resurrection. And now we're going to move into from the resurrection to the ascension and glorification of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's jump right on in here. Praise God, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for all those that are joining us and being with us tonight. May they be blessed and may they enjoy this time together. And you may you open up the eyes of the understanding and that they will know the, the will and the purposes of God in all things as we study your word together. Praise God. Hallelujah. The ascension and glorification of Jesus Christ. So we already talked about the resurrection. And that was last week. And now we're going to talk about after the resurrection was the ascension. Hallelujah. And um, glorification and the seating at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. By the ascension of Christ, we're making reference to this event that when he departed from this earth in his resurrected body and was visibly taken into heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. Mark and Luke are the only gospel writers who spoke of it, of the four. Uh, in Mark 16, 19, it says, So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven. And, um, and then Luke 24, 50 and 51, And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, when he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried into heaven. <clears throat> Glory to God. In Acts 1, 9, Luke, also the writer of this, um, and when he was taken, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was, <coughs> excuse me, hallelujah, <coughs> he was taken up, and the cloud deceived him out of their sight. Uh, I'm going to have to ask somebody to get me something to drink. Um, praise God. <coughs> One of those um, lemon predicted the event of his resurrection. Now, <coughs> did we just do something weird? <coughs> Am I back on or off? Okay. Um, Jesus predicted this event. What? And if you shall see this up where he was before <coughs> John 6, 62. Bind that thing in Jesus' name. Quit that. Paul taught Christ's ascension. Wherefore he saith when he ascended up on high. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to just do this right here in front of you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus predicted the event of his ascension. When, what? <coughs> what? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. John 6, 62. Paul taught Christ's uh, ascension. Wherefore he saith, when he led captivity captive, he gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? That he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He, <clears throat> he that descended, it's the same also that ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 8 through 10. Putting the words together. Ascended up far above all things and made higher than the heavens over in Hebrews 7 26. But that is passed through the heavens, um, Hebrews 4 14 from the RV. <coughs> the picture seems to be there are several heavens, possibly the atmospheric and the astronomic, through which Jesus passed on his way to the Father. Uh, William Evans um, 
suggests this means that he overcame all those evil principalities and powers that inhabit um, these heavenlies and will doubtless try their best to keep him from passing through the heavens to present his finished work to the Father. Perlman, Meyer Perlman, the writer of uh, Through the Bible, Book by Book, and other writings, reminds us that thus the ascension became the dividing line of two periods of Christ's life. Hallelujah. From the birth to the resurrection, he is the Christ of human history. The one who lived a perfect human life under earthly conditions. Uh, since the ascension, he is the Christ of the spiritual experience who lives in heaven and touches men through the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Now I'm wondering how well that's going to be. Uh, how Luke teaches of the uh, exaltation. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, in Acts 2 and 33, him how hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, Acts 5 and 31. So Luke covers those two events and says in Acts 2, 33 and Acts 5, 31, Jesus was exalted. Peter talks about this in his writing in 1 Peter 3, 22. Um, Peter, who has gone, who says this, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and principalities and powers being made subject unto him. And then Paul also writes and uh, states, uh, it is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God in Romans 8, 34, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. <coughs> hand um, heavenly places Ephesians 1 20 if ye be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God Colossians 3 and 1 but this man after he offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of God Hebrews 10 12 and Jesus implied in Matthew 22, 41 through 46, and clearly taught it in Revelation 3, 21, to him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. So this is exaltation, the exaltation after their ascension, his exaltation. Stephen saw the glorified Lord shortly before his death, before Stephen's death, his martyred death, thus he cried, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God in Acts 7, 55 and 56. The right hand of God indicates a place of honor and of power. Remember, Zebedee's mom came and wanted to know um, if her sons could sit at the right hand of Jesus in, in, in heaven. And, of course, he rebuked her for that. And um, really, that's the only place for the Son himself. And those in Christ, the body is in him. Glory to God. Wherefore, God also has highly exalted him, referring to Jesus, and given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, Philippians 2, 9 through 11. So we have different accounts through the New Testament writers, Jesus himself saying it, New Testament writers saying it, that he was exalted and seated at the right hand of the Father in the ascension. When he was resurrected, he then ascended. Hallelujah. Remember we talked about last week, he was physically, bodily resurrected. Hallelujah. And then seated at the right hand of the Father. So what are the results of this ascension, ascension and exaltation? Because, you know, if Jesus just was raised from the dead and went and sat down by the Father, and that was it, um, there's got to be a purpose. See, God doesn't do things without purpose. God does things with purpose. And so... Let's look at these results that took place because Jesus 
uh, was resurrected, ascended, and exalted, and seated at the right hand of the Father. Number one, he is now our high priest, appearing for God on our behalf. Look at Hebrews 9, 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true. And that's talking about the tabernacle and the temple. You know, the tabernacle is the portable worshiping uh, gathering place. Um, before Solomon's temple, it was it was a tent. It was set up and broken down as they moved, as because you know the Jews were nomads for a period of time, and they had a they had a tabernacle. But then um, later, built Solomon's temple laid out the exact same way. It was like it, it, nothing was different about the layout. It was just it was a permanent structure instead of a temporary structure. And it says here, uh, Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands. Talking about the earthly. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil of the temple was rent in two from top to bottom. Now that was uh, 60 foot wide, 40 foot high, six inches thick at least of woven material. Schwarzenegger couldn't rip that in half. Okay? Six inches of woven material. Try, try tearing your shirt, which is, you know, a, you know, an eighth of an inch, maybe. Six inches. And, um, but, and about thus signifying that the place, that the dwelling place of God would no longer be a place made with the hands of men. And so that's, it's, that's that, that reference is to the earthly tabernacle. Okay? Uh, he's not entering into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures. They were types. They were allegorical, uh, foreshadowing, um, giving a picture in human terms that you can look at that should have pointed them to Christ when he came in reality, but um, they still missed it, many of them. But he did not go there. He went into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us, Hebrews 9.24. And seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession or our confession. Hebrews 4.14. 4, so the first result of the exaltation of Christ, the resurrection, the ascension, and now the seating, the exaltation of Christ, is he is our high priest. See, that, that makes it a specific purpose in what God has done. Jesus now operates and functions as our high priest. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Secondly, we are assured of access to God. It does no good for Jesus to come to redeem us and to do all he did without giving us access to God. Under the old covenant and under the tabernacle and the, and, and, and the tabernacle um, and um, temple system, only the high priest could go into the presence of God, and that only once a year. One once a year with a rope tied around his leg. And uh, if, he, if he didn't go in there right, he, they had to drag him out because he was dead. Okay? He had to go in and do everything just right or he, he was cooked. Okay? It assures believers of a free access into the presence of God. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Notice it says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. When? In the time of need. That's Hebrews 4, 14 and 16. And then 1 Timothy 2, 5 says, there is one mediator. I mean, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. We now have access to the throne of grace. We're not going to the throne of judgment. We're going to the throne of grace. There is a coming great white throne of judgment, but the church being under the blood of Jesus will be spared the judgment. Hallelujah. And glory to God. Amen. I love uh, being spared the judgment. Can I get two amens in here? 
And I got 100%. All right. Glory to God. So number one, he's our high priest. Number two, we've been assured access to the presence of God. Number three, his resurrection, ascension, and exaltation makes Jesus Christ the head of the church. He is the head of the church. Glory to God. Thank God he is the head. Can you say amen? Amen. Ephesians 1.22 says, and hath put all things, this is God talking about, and God hath put all things under his, Jesus' feet, okay? That's the understood if you read the whole passage. So, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him, that is Jesus, that to be the head over all things to the church. And in Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Glory to God. So, he, 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 and, and being the head of the church, only he can speak on behalf of the covenants of the church in spiritual matters, meaning you can't undo what Christ did for humanity. Adam did. Adam sold all of humanity into a spiritual captivity and bondage. Someone's failure to walk out their walk with Christ or not to receive Christ does not undo what Jesus did. Hallelujah. And so no one man can put all mankind back under Satan's dominion because Jesus is the head of the church. Glory to God. That's why Satan tried in the wilderness when he tempted him and said and, and took him to a high place and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and said all these are mine and have been delivered into my hand and I will give them to you if you will bow down and worship me. He was trying to get Jesus to forever settle Satan as the head, the ruler of all mankind. But Jesus answered and said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou worship <coughs> glory to god because jesus was ascended, resurrected ascended and exalted <coughs> spirit was given remember um jesus said in john 16 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, hallelujah, I will send him unto you. And then John 14, 6, Jesus said, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now, you know, in our studies in the past, you know the word comforter comes from the Greek paraclete. Uh, actually, in this, in this uh, here, it's a form of it, parakletos, okay? meaning comforter, helper, strength, and stand by advocate, intercessor, teacher. Hallelujah. And that's Jesus was all those things to them. But then when he said, I'll send you another, the word another uh, literally bears out in Greek uh, one after the same manner as myself. So Jesus said, I will send, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another one after the same manner as myself, who is the Helper, strengthener, standby, advocate, teacher, intercessor. Okay? And I left one out. I don't remember which one I missed. Glory to God. But it's all good. Amen. Uh, and then Acts 2.33, Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has set forth this which you now see and hear. Now, this is when the Holy Ghost was poured out on the day of Pentecost, and they came out of the upper room speaking of the tongues, cloven tongues like a fire had descended on them, and they were speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They stumbled out, and they said, these men are drunk uh, on new wine. And then Paul stood, I mean, Peter stood up and said, we are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Then in the last days I will pour out my Spirit. Glory to God. And now that Jesus was ascended into heaven, he poured out the Holy Ghost, Hallelujah, and, and it became an experience subsequent to the new birth, 
Glory to God, we can prove that through many scriptures that Jesus gave the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. So we have, he's now our high priest. We have assurance that we have access to the Father. We, he is now the head of the church, and he gave the Holy Ghost. And now if you go to Acts, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Spirit's poured out. Wherefore, hallelujah, God hath highly exalted him. Glory to God. Amen. And he gave gifts unto men. Praise God. We look at Acts chapter 12, now concerning verse 1, spiritual gifts. Now the King James has the word gifts there. That is italicized. The word gifts is italicized, meaning and you can look in front of your, your king, if you're using King James or any Bible that does this. And then I have it there. Italicized words are, are, are there because the translators believed that it would add clarification to the passage, but it's not in the Greek. So in other words, it's added. And they want you to know it's added, so you don't, you don't think they're mistranslating the Bible. Um, but they, they thought it might bring clarification. Well, it, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. The word spiritual in the Greek is plural here. And really, the meaning bears out more now concerning things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Okay, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Well, aren't you glad God doesn't want us ignorant of spiritual things? Can I get an amen out there if you don't, aren't you, that you're glad that God doesn't want us ignorant of spiritual things? Hallelujah. I'm awaiting. Hallelujah. All right. He goes on and says this, ye know. You were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols. Hallelujah. Even as you were led. Who led? You were carried away into dumb idols, being led by your flesh or by demons. Um, wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diverse, I mean, there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God that worketh all in all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, divers. And really, divers is not in the Greek. So, to another, kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh the one and self same Spirit dividing severally to every man as he will. <coughs> yes, of the Spirit are given by the Spirit as he wills. You just don't get to go, well, I want to prophesy. I'm going to be, I want to be somebody that prophesies. I can prophesy because I want to. No. If it's not inspired, given, directed, unctioned by the Holy Spirit, it's you and not him. Sorry. It's that's just the way it is. And if you if he didn't bless you that way, well then bless your heart. You know, just get work with what he gave you. And work with the gifts that he gave you. Ephesians chapter four, verse eight. Hallelujah. Ephesians four. Wherefore he saith. When he ascended up on high. Now remember we talked about Jesus has ascended. Jesus has been exalted. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. He led captivity captive. And gave gifts unto men. Now the ascended. What is it also that he first descended. First into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended. Is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. That he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets 
and some pastors, I mean, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now, there's a, there's a debate or an argument here whether teachers is a separate gift or if some is inferring there are some pastors and some teachers. Um, I think you could, you could strain at a gnat and miss the whole thing here. There are obviously different ministry gifts, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and, and, and teachers. I believe they're teachers, okay? Um, and they're given for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So he gave gifts. He, he went into heaven. So one of the purposes of his ascension, exalt, exaltation, and seating at the right hand of the Father is the um, outpouring of the Holy Ghost and the uh, administration or giving of spiritual gifts, of, men, uh, of tongues, interpretation of tongues, of prophecy, of word of wisdom, of word of knowledge, of discerning of spirits, of prophecy. Hallelujah. And I probably left out something there. Working of miracles and gifts of healings. And he gave ministry gifts. Those that stand in what we would refer to in, in, in our vernacular, pulpit ministries. The apostles and the evangelists and the pastor and the teacher and the um, evangelist. These are, these are pulpit type ministries. <coughs> Those that are set to be lead guides and, uh, to the body of Christ through the teaching of the word of God um, as a gift. Hallelujah. And anyone can teach what they know. But there are gifts and equipped by God for the ministry along those lines. And then number six, he is preparing a place for his own. I got a mansion just over the hilltop. Praise God. Yeah. And some folks just want a little old log cabin over in the corner of heaven. I, I mean, if you want a log cabin, you can have one, I'm sure. John 14 through Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, a, a, a habitation, a habitation. Glory to God. You know, we're coming up on basketball season, and uh, it's, it's always right to do a Duke Carolina joke. And, um, you know, I just think it's a good place to stick this one in here. You know, um, you know Mike, Dean Smith has already passed away, and, and then Mike Krzyzewski died and went to heaven and got there, and Jesus took him over to show him his house, and, you know, there's – there's this, this really nice place that, that, that Mike has. Now, don't, this is no theological thing, okay? Um, so Mike goes in, looks around, and he, he says, but Lord, let me ask you something. Um, um, why, I, I mean, I, all I did, I won more games than anybody in the history of basketball. And, and um, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm appreciative of my place, but, but, but why did Dean Smith get up this house? And he looked up there, and there's this house with these ro gold roads going up and the Carolina flags flying all over the place. And, you know, really, I mean, just beyond anything else, anybody had it up, uh, up there. And he, he was just kind of concerned as to why Dean got that, and he got this lesser one. And, um, and, and the Lord looked at, at uh, Mike and said, that's not Dean's house, that's mine. Hallelujah. Some of y'all can go ahead and laugh. Hallelujah. Please put a laugh out there. I'm waiting. Is anybody going to put anything? Jesse, put something, a laugh out there. Okay. Okay. All right. The praise the Lord. I love telling that. Anyway. Jesus went to prepare a place for us. Glory to God. And there's not one that's better than the other. Hallelujah. And God's not flying Carolina flags. I was just being silly. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, now, now they're coming in. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, and Jesus has promised or pledged to return. He said this. He said, I, um, if I go and prepare a place for you, in John 14, 3, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. There you may be also. Glory to God. Amen? Jesus. So let's look back over these, these uh, seven um, results of the election of Christ, or the exaltation of Christ. He's now a high priest. He has assured us access to the Father. He is now the head of the church. He poured out the Holy Spirit on the church. He gave gifts to men. Hallelujah. Both spiritual gifts for um, that the Holy Spirit operates through the church to, for, for blessing and for, what, for whatever purpose the Holy Spirit has. 
and ministry gifts to the church. And then he's prepared a place for us and he has pledged to return and take all those all with him to that place. Glory be to God. Can you say amen? Praise God. Let's go through this next section. And we'll stop there for tonight. It might take us about 15 minutes or so. Um, so let's now talk about the practical values of the doctrines of the ascension and the glorification of Christ. Okay, we gave reasons. Now the practical values. Uh, again, Meyer Perlman uh, has given us the following very, I guess, practical, inspiring values of realizing that our Lord and Savior has ascended and seated at the right hand of the Father. We're not talking about... Um, a spiritual zealot religious figure who people followed, but he died and, and now they just kind of honor his memory. We're talking about the resurrected, ascended, exalted Lord and head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. So what are the practical values of, of this event in the history of humanity that God has wrought in his great wisdom and love and care for humanity. Well, first of all, it's an incentive to holiness. Consciousness of the ascended Christ, whom we look forward to seeing one day, is an incentive to holiness. Let's look at Colossians 1. I mean, I'm sorry, Colossians 3. Hallelujah. Verse 1, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, setting your affections on things above and not on things of the earth, for you are dead, and your life is hid in Christ, with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our say, life, shall appear, then shall you, he appear also, I'm sorry, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall we also appear with him in glory. <coughs> what does Paul go on and say in the next verse? Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. And he goes on a list a bunch of stuff. Fornication, uncleanness, um, inordinate affection, evil, compucence, uh, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Okay, so here's an incentive to live holy. Because you know Jesus is alive and he's coming back. So it's an incentive to live in a manner that would be pleasing to him when he shows up. Hallelujah. Um, I knew some people and they would play tricks on one another. They were, they were, they were, they were people that, you know, uh, they were Christians, actually they were ministers, but they would play tricks on one another um, just just to do some of the craziest stuff. And one of them actually went out one time. They had stayed in their home of, of, the, of a fellow person and knew that that guy's mom was coming to visit soon. And um, before he left town, he went out and bought uh, beer and stuck in the guy's refrigerator. Well, he didn't drink. Neither one of them did. But the guy didn't drink. And when mom got there, saw that, she's on the phone calling her son saying, so-and-so, what's going on here? And, uh, you know, it's not mine, Mom. It's not mine. You know, I didn't do that. Hallelujah. You know, and uh, if you knew Mom was coming, you wouldn't have beer in your refrigerator if you knew she was going to do that. Hallelujah. That was my point. It wasn't the, you know, and uh, these guys are crazy sometimes. I think they've grown up since then. Maybe. Hallelujah. But um, if you know Jesus is coming back, Brother Hagin used to say this. He used to say, um, live like Jesus is coming back any second plan like he's not coming back for 50 years. In other words, make your plans for the future. Make your plans to do this for the kingdom of God. Make your plans to li live this out and to do this, but live your life as if any second he's going to return. So the incentive to holiness. Hallelujah. The upward glance will counteract the downward pull. Hallelujah. This event of the resurrection, ascension, and exaltation gives a right conception of the church. The knowledge of the ascension 
makes for a right conception of the church. In other words, belief in a merely human Christ will cause people to regard the church as a human society, useful for philanthropic and moral purposes, but possessing no power, supernatural power or authority. On the other hand, a knowledge of the ascended Christ will result in the recognition of the church as an organism, a supernatural organism deriving divine life from the risen head, which is Christ. Glory to God. You see, when we have people who, who say, I'm a Christian, which they simply mean they've adopted certain practices or moral ideas, ideals of Christianity, but they've not had an experience with the supernatural God. They've not been born again. You see, they simply regard Christ as a good religious leader or, you know, a man who had good sayings or, you know, good teachings. Um, but it's, de it's, it's devoid of power and supernatural authority from God. But the realization of his resurrection, ascension, and exaltation becomes a practical value which helps keep us a right conception that the church is a supernatural living organism under the supernatural authority and power of Jesus Christ, its head. It will give us a right attitude toward the world. Consciousness of the ascended Christ will produce a right attitude toward the world and worldly things. For our conversation, literally our citizenship, is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, Philippians 3.20. Though we're of this world, we're, though we're in this world, we are not of this world. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. We're strangers. Hallelujah. We're sojourners in a strange land. Glory to God. Can you say a bit? So we have to maintain our right attitude towards the world and worldly things. Not just to the world itself, but to the things of the world. Um, having faith in the ascended Christ should and will ascend, uh, inspire a deep sense of personal responsibility. Belief in the ascended Christ carries with it the knowledge that an account will be rendered to him someday. How you conduct yourself, how you did, what you did with the things he gave you. Uh, you'll have to give an account for that. Uh, the parable of the talents. Glory to God. And we can look at Romans 14, 7 and 9, 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10 for this. The sense of a responsibility to a master in heaven acts as a deterrent to sin and an, and an incentive to righteousness. And I know that's not popular in, in some of the teaching today, but we should be, you know, we should be detoured, deterred from sin and have an overwhelming sense of responsibility to live the way God created us to live. And to, and to do that. Hallelujah. And then last, and we're going to close here. It produces the joyous hope of his return. With the faith in the ascended Christ is connected with the joyous and blessed hope of his returning. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. We're looking forward to the day Jesus comes back. John, um, the apostle John, in writing the book of Revelation, stated you know, even so come quickly, Lord Jesus. The, 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 the first century church was so looking forward to it. They, they thought like it was an imminent, any second thing. And we, we know uh, as we've gone through time that they were and looking at Bible and studying uh, over time. But they had such that overwhelming sense that he's coming back and, and look forward to it so much. It was pressing on them all the time. Is at any moment, any moment, any moment. And the truth of the matter is it could be at any moment. Uh, we are living out things now in Bible prophecy. Um, that had to be fulfilled, but man, they're being fulfilled at a rate, kind of like technology. Uh, you know, uh, what's, what's, this is 2020, uh, back in the 60s, you know, a computer that took up the whole downstairs of my house almost with raised floors and cables all under it and, you know, super air conditioners to keep it cool and uh, sequential tape drives all down the wall and a card reader 
80 column card readers with punch punch cards with holes in them <laughs> read cards and now my watch is a is a mini computer i mean it 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 does all kinds of stuff on, on this little watch uh, your cell phone is is even more so um, the things we can do the technology has advanced so quickly and prophecy is kind of doing the same prophecy is accelerating things that have been prophesied that were going to take place before the return of Christ are accelerating but we in the church should be looking with joy and hope of his return now not Lord come get us out of this mess because he's coming back for a glorious church having not spot or wrinkle hallelujah can you say glory to God? Hallelujah. He's coming back. Hallelujah. And we're going to, you know, we're, we're, we're cutting out of here. And so shall we be with the Lord and so shall we ever be with him. In Jesus' name, praise God. Uh, next week, uh, we're going to talk about the, elect, the application of the provisions of his resurrection, ascension, and exaltation. And we'll get into that next week. But before we go, we want to give you an opportunity um, tonight to... Um, so into the church with your, your weekly uh, tithes and offerings, if you haven't given this week, um, uh, giving it to the building fund. And those also watching, if you want to be a supporting to the um, new Mevo, which you're looking at us on tonight, boy, and that is really clear. The other one's kind of fuzzy. It got in where it's kind of fuzzy. This is like crystally, crystal clear. I can actually read my name down there before it's kind of muddled. Hallelujah. Um, but we've, we've gotten 360 uh, or three hundred and eighty dollars of the Mevo, of the six hundred and fifty, and so if you want to be a part, you can electronically give through PayPal or a cash app towards the Mevo. Uh, if you want to give uh, by snail mail, uh, you can mail that to the church, and I guess I'll put that up there eventually or at some time. Uh, do we have a slide there for the giving on the church? I, I see PayPal and I see donations. I don't see the, the mailing address for snail mail. We don't have that up there? Okay. Well, we'll get it. We'll, we'll come up with that sometime. Or you go to the website, fvc.org, and get that information on how to mail, where to mail it to. Um, praise God. And to our building fund, we're approaching, actually, we went over, didn't we, 17? Mm -hmm. We went over 17 this week. Hallelujah. Of the 60, we need 60,000. So we're 43, less than 43,000 away from that, uh, which is great. The building's still waiting on us. Um, we just got to get to that 60. And uh, let's just stay in faith, keep sharing it, keep believing, keep supporting, keep going. Glory to God. We're on the way. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're almost to the, we're getting close to that 20 mark. So let's break that 20 and just go, let's go wide open and uh, get it done. Hallelujah. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you for those giving right now in the name of Jesus. Bless their lives, bless their finances, cause them to walk in full supply and overflow in all that they set their hand to do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, we're so glad you could join us tonight. I want to leave you with these words as we as we depart, as we always do, um, from First John chapter five, verse four. And ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church Online. Praise God.